guys showing you a short film. Whoops, sorry, I don't mean to take off the face of anybody in the front room. Uh, this is actually a documentary film. Uh, it's part of a long series of documentary films that I've been working on. The Complete History of Communism. And this is part three. Some of you may have seen Communism Part 1, which is Karl Marx and the writing of the Communist Manifesto. Some of you may have seen Part 2, which is uh, the Paris Commune of 1871. Some of you may have already seen Part 3. In fact, some of you may have already seen Part 4. But regardless, this evening I'll be doing Part 3. Complete History of Communism Part 3, the Formation of the Soviet Union. First I'll introduce two men, Trotsky and Lenin, who led the Russian Revolution. At first they were political enemies of each other, but they were both always distributing Marxist pamphlets and committing other revolutionary acts. They were both always getting thrown in jail and escaping, and always getting exiled and coming back. Now I'll introduce Russia in 1900, basically an unindustrial, medieval sort of place. Ruled over by the Tsar and the church and the landlords, most of the people lived practically as slaves. There were revolutions which tried and failed, like one that happened in 1905. But when World War I happened, the Russian people decided that they had finally had enough. See, fighting against better industrialized Germany, the Russian army lost more soldiers than any army in any war in history before. And they started to say to each other, well, we could keep getting blown apart for the sake of our rich leaders, but what the heck for? Because they're commanding officers who send us out to die. They're our landlords. They're the same ones who tax our land and tax our bread. We wouldn't have to die in their stupid war or be starving and poor if we just got smart and shot all of them instead. So in February 1917, there were massive uprisings. The Tsar knew his time had come, he just gave up and went, and power fell into the hands of the rich parliament called the Dumas, which became the provisional government, but this group still did not give land or food to the peasants, plus they continued to fight World War I, all those disgruntled soldiers and peasants and workers across Russia were still angry and still wanted a bigger change to come. Meanwhile, Lenin was once again in exile, this time in Switzerland, when he read the news and he heard... And he took a sealed train across Germany and arrived back in the Russian capital in 1917's April 3rd. And finally, Lenin and Trotsky joined forces with each other, and together their ideas for a better kind of government were spread. They said power should be in the hands of smaller local councils called Soviets, and they demanded immediate peace, land, and bread. And the communist takeover happened pretty easily in the capital in 1917's October. In the largest country in the world, a Marx-inspired communist revolution had actually peacefully taken over. Well, taking power in the capital was relatively easy, but then a horrendous civil war soon exploded. Between the Red Army who wanted change, and the White Army who wanted to return to imperial power and land return to the original landlord owners, the White Armies were separate groups, but they were funded by America and France and England and Japan. And the Red Army was just a peasant army, but they had the support of the peasants because they all wanted to kick the rich landlords off the land. And the Red Army won, but after World War I and the Civil War, Russia was in ruins and starving and tired. See, in order to have peace with Germany, Lenin had to give the Germans a gigantic chunk of the Russian Empire. Oops. And the land that Lenin had to give away contained almost all of Russia's industry, Russia's iron, and Russia's coal. It was Lenin's biggest hope that soon Germany might have a communist revolution too, and then the resources might be shared by all. Another unpopular thing Lenin did was when Russia had its first ever democratic election for assembly leaders. Lenin got rid of the whole assembly and said in this new society, rule by the Soviet councils was the only power needed. So for these reasons, many communists actually hated Lenin, and he was almost assassinated by a woman named Fania Kaplan. He survived, but he was weaker, and in 1922 he wrote a testament warning of some things he was scared were going to happen. He was worried about a split in the Communist Party leadership between Trotsky and the Secretary General, Joseph Stalin. Stalin had been filling governmental seats with his own supporters, and Lenin warned he'd gotten too powerful and seemed too intolerant. In 1924, Lenin died. Stalin took power, started getting rid of his enemies, and Trotsky fled. Trotsky moved to Mexico, where he had an affair with Frida Kahlo, and in 1940, someone murdered him with an ice pick to the head. Meanwhile, all those Russian peasants had slaved and starved for 900 years. Now everyone had free rent, free health care, free lifelong education. 
The Soviet Union defeated Hitler and even became a world leader in space exploration. But trying to start a new kind of society from scratch, based on poor resources and surrounded by a whole world that wanted them crushed, the Soviet leadership became a paranoid, oppressive dictatorship, and Lenin's dream of communism was lost. Which leads us right into complete history of communism part four, communism in China. But I'm not going to do that one this evening. Thank you for paying attention. symbol of this song, which is only one pound in the back, and uh, it's also got, one of, the, one of the bonus tracks on it is a rap by our, our uncle, Professor Louie, who's one of my favorite rappers. You don't think my vocals loud enough? It's pretty loud. Oh, you think your vocals loud enough? I think okay. it's loud enough. Oh, if you think it's loud enough, then that's, that's fine by me. Thank you.